Well, hello everybody. Today we're talking about the Dragonborn DLC. That is the largest expansion pack for Skyrim. Now, previous DLCs had us in Dawnguard dealing with the evil Lord Harkon and upgrading our abilities in general. And then the second DLC was just generic house fluff. It was a garbage DLC called Hearthfire. So the third DLC is the meat and potatoes. That takes us to the Isle of Solstein. We're introduced to all new characters with all new predicaments. Now first we deal with the people from Ravenrock who are having some trouble with Ash Spawn attacking their town. As you know, they got this giant wall called the Bulwark which protects their town. But it isn't quite good enough and you gotta lend your Dragonborn assistance. Then kind of on the other side of the island we got the Skull. They're kind of tribal, but that's okay. And then far off, we got the evil worshippers of Merak doing their evil dark arts. In general, the island is just a powder keg waiting to explode. If there's anything I want to impress upon you, it's that Bethesda's releases for Skyrim and Fallout are dumb and bad. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm actually talking about Fallout 4's newest DLC called Far Harbor. Now, if you replace the F with a B, it is in fact Bar Harbor from the real world. I've never been there myself, however, my friends who have been there have told me that it is fairly accurate, in a post-apocalyptic sort of way. So Far Harbor begins where the detective agency calls you and basically says, hey, this girl named Kasumi's gone missing, you've gotta go find out what happened to her. Now Kasumi's part of an all-Asian household, something that kind of struck me as odd at first, mainly because there is no emphasis on people's skin color and ethnicity in the Fallout game. Now, after you do a little bit of mock detective work, it's basically revealed that Kasumi has run off to the north. You see, she believes that she's a synth, and there's a place called Arcadia where synths live in peace. So you're tasked to go to Far Harbor and find Kasumi and bring her home. As soon as you get to Far Harbor, you find out that it's under attack by fog monsters. Yes, indeed. The fog is real in Far Harbor. And oddly enough, this island is great. I love this island. I just love the thick fog, the way it obscures your vision and you hear this thump, thump in the distance like there's a gigantic monster just gonna come out and snatch you from the fog. But that never happens. This island, wonderfully designed, screams to me the same thing that everything Bethesda has made in the last decade screams to me. Wasted potential. There is so much potential to have this expansive island filled with deadly fog, with fog monsters, which turned out to be just ordinary monsters that you can't see from very far away. But imagine how it could be taking these horror elements about the fog and sticking them into a Fallout universe, it, it works because the radiation from the fog mutated things. Hell, even the trappers that are all over the island, they're crazy cannibals now because it turned out that they breathed in the fog too much and it drove them bonkers. And you know what? They just wholesale replaced the bandits with trappers. It's dumb. They could have named the factions of trappers. They could have had a couple leaders of the factions of trappers. They could have still been hostile to you 100% of the time, but they could have also been hostile to each other. We could have had some kind of on-island politics between the trappers, some kind of look into their society, but no, they're just crazy bandits. They're, they're your generic Borderlands psycho enemies. I have the shiniest meat! Now, if you treat these trappers like generic kill fodder and item nodes where, you know, you strip their corpses, it's a pretty good action game. But again, it screams wasted potential because of all the things they could have done here. Now, that isn't to say I didn't enjoy myself. Holy shit, that 15 hours or so that I went exploring the whole island, checking every nook and cranny, I enjoyed the hell out of it. But you know what? And this is really, really sad. But when I looked for radiant quests afterward, I was disappointed that there was hardly anything to do after you finished the main quest. It was like, okay, we finished this island, we've got a couple settlements here, and there's jack shit to do. The question everyone's asking right now, because I bashed this game so much, is, is this DLC worth getting? And I believe that if you enjoyed Fallout 4 for what it was, an action game, not an RPG, then you're going to enjoy this as well. It is fun, and I recommend picking it up. So there are three main factions. There's Far Harbor, and Far Harbor is currently at war with the Children of Adam. 
Now, the children of Adam used to be peaceful, but then there was this crazy man named Tectus, who basically took over and made them into an evil religion. Tectus's right-hand man named Richter Die, monster! turned out to be a former member of the Enclave. Now, it turns out that these children of the Adam, they are all immune to radiation. They don't ghoulify, they don't get cancer from it, they just exist in the glow, as they call it. And they believe that their faith has caused the fog to expand because the fog is radioactive, it drives people crazy, and those who don't get radioactive or crazied can join the Children of the Atom because they have Adam's blessing. Now the third settlement in between everything is Arcadia. This is where the synths go. The synths are desperate to have a place of their own far enough away from the Institute where no one can track them down. That's what Arcadia is all about. And Dima, who looks like some kind of Aztec god, turns out he was a prototype synth, one of the earlier generation ones that can't keep all of his memories. It turns out that his storage capacity in his brain was limited. So what they ended up doing is they've got this big computer he hooks up to where it holds all his extra memories. And every once in a while, when there's something he really wants to forget, he offloads his memories into a different computer and forgets them. The genius of this character is that you don't know who he really is or what his motivations really are because he doesn't know what his motivations really were in the past because he lost those memories. If he ever reclaims those memories, he becomes a different person as a result. They didn't really play with this concept very well, but they had the foundation for an excellent character in Dima. And I'm about to explain in just a second after I put up this SPOILER WARNING. Alright, you've been warned. Now, Dima has set up plans to destroy Far Harbor because they've got these condensers that more or less protect them from the fog. Okay? Dima's got this plan where he shuts down the power to them and everybody in Far Harbor dies. Likewise, he's got a plan where the Children of the Atom, they're in a nuclear sub, he's going to detonate the missiles inside the submarine and kill all the Children of the Atom. Now, after a lot of reflection, he decided these plans couldn't be done. They're, they were just too far outside of his morals, but he prepared for them anyway. And what he did was he hid those memories away in case he needed them later, effectively forgetting about them. Unfortunately, you as the player stumble across those memories and gain access to those two options. So at any time after you've gained those options, you can blow up the Children of the Atom or let everyone in Far Harbor die. But this is very, very reminiscent of Fallout 4's main quest. Oh, who's gonna blow up the Institute today or are you not gonna blow up the Institute? It's up to you. That's literally it. You choose which faction dies and which one lives. However, there is a path to peace. The path to peace is kind of sinister. You find out that Avery, who is the captain of Far Harbor, this pretty much generic wastelander, she's dead. She's been replaced by a synth by Dima, but Dima went and forgot about it. So the only difference is that this Captain Avery, she thinks she's Captain Avery, but it turns out there were a few minor tweaks to her programming where she essentially was kinder and more accepting. Otherwise, she's still Captain Avery. It's just that she's more willing to accept peace and needs to do what's right. Likewise, the High Confessor Tectus, who is the villain, uh, essentially, the big guy of the Children of Adam, who you can actually ally yourself with and destroy Far Harbor with if you so choose, you can actually have him killed and replaced with a synth. And that synth has had a vision that it is time for peace. And so you can force peace by killing the leaders and replacing them with synths, effectively making them both Dima's puppet. Did Dima want this? No, but he accepts it for peace. I would have much preferred to see Dima's temperament change as he gained those memories back. There was so much more that they could have done with his character, and it was an excellent foundation. But again, I find that Bethesda is excellent at making these sandboxes and these basic foundations and fairly well underdoing them. I mean, they're, they're good, they're, they're enjoyable, and I find the Far Harbor experience highly recommended for any people who enjoyed Fallout 4. But other than that, if you didn't enjoy Fallout 4 and you barely got by it, this is not going to change your mind. This is not going to make you instantly love Fallout 4. This is a side quest. It is the Dragonborn DLC to the Skyrim. 
Now, things that I really, really wanted. Number one, I wanted the island to be about 25% bigger. People always complain about how I want these games to be bigger, but there's a reason for this. I don't, I'm not saying three times bigger, I'm not saying five times bigger, I'm just saying 25% bigger. The reason is because I enjoyed those sections between settlements and places where you're wandering through the fog and fog monsters could get you at any moment. I love that idea and I want to see more of those moments. But at the same time, there isn't enough to do. Once you finish the two side quests in each area and then you finish the main quest, you're basically done with the island. I want to see more things to do on Far Harbor, but at the same time I don't want to compromise the space between those moments of being lost in the fog. The compromise is to increase the land mass by 25%, giving you more things in the world whilst keeping the space between settlements the same. I believe that about six or seven new locations for optional side quests and repeatable quests made the difference, really. I enjoyed Far Harbor. I feel it is worth a buy. But once again, like everything else, wasted potential. Now it did add harpoon guns, a few unique armors, and Adam's Judgment, this awesome radioactive super sledgehammer. I like it. I'll be using it on my main character. But ultimately, due to the lack of content, after I finished exploring the entire island, I'm back to the Commonwealth again. And I can't say that feels very good, because Far Harbor nailed that atmosphere. Now ultimately, I think how I would have handled Far Harbor, number one, in addition to having Kasumi missing, I would have the fog start encroaching on the Commonwealth. We're talking about, like, massive, massive amounts of fog, and we have to find out where it's coming from. And Kasumi's is just the breadcrumb trail that leads you to Far Harbor. And depending on how you deal with the quest in Far Harbor, I would have had it to where the fog would actually cover the Commonwealth as well, or be purged from the island. But instead, we're left in this ambiguous state where it feels like we're just adding more fog condensers to the island where, okay, there's more and more settlements, we've reclaimed more and more space. It doesn't feel right. Another thing that I have changed, again, I would have added unique fog monsters. That is to say, at certain times, the fog would get especially dense. It would be very difficult to see. And then you would hear this ambient noise, like a thump, thump thump and then a giant death claw or uh, be better yet a fog crawler death claw mutant spawn thing would come out and attack you some kind of unique monsters and i feel like again the fog was underplayed now another thing i noticed is they used the distance away from the commonwealth to say oh well there's now i noticed another thing they used the distance from the commonwealth to be like well the institute can't reach us here and that is most unfortunate because I feel like the introduction of coursers and other things would have made this far more interesting if Arcadia were a little more hidden instead of just a bunker that anyone could find. The potential was nearly endless to integrate this into the main storyline, but because they wanted the DLC to stand apart from the main storyline, it just didn't work right. Now I know I get criticism saying, how can you possibly integrate it with the main storyline if you have the potential to end the main storyline before you go there. This is true, which is why there's variations on things, simple variations, dialogue level variations. I mean, the way they made coursers sound, they've been going on missions all the freaking time, not just an occasional appearance. We could have assumed that there was some kind of institute mission underway before you even reached Far Harbor. For the Children of the Atom, I really wanted to see more about their faith and the Fog Mother and things like that. They, they touched upon these things early on and they didn't go into depth with them, which made it, again, feel shallow as shit. The only settlement I felt was fleshed out to its potential was Far Harbor, and that's because Far Harbor didn't have much potential to begin with. It was the introductory area. They are basic wastelanders trying to survive. There isn't much more in-depth than that. You help them, you overcome their ignorance, you perform a ritual known as the Captain's Dance, and you are now accepted among them. All in all, Far Harbor felt like a lot of good ideas that they needed to spend more time on. 
but if I had to compare it to the Dragonborn DLC, I'd say it is functionally inferior but thematically superior. This is another example of the illusion of choice being put straight in your face, but you know what? I don't really mind. All I can say is that when it was over, I asked, why is it over? Why can't I keep doing things? And the answer was, we ran out of content to give you. So thank you very much for watching. Again, my final verdict is, this is definitely worth buying. I am currently in the process of working on a Skyrim character build. I had to start it over due to technical reasons. However, it is underway. Also check out my series, Ideal Elder Scrolls. The link for it will be in the video description. Now the final note is that the Fallout 4 creation kit has been released. I refuse to play vanilla Fallout 4 these days and I've been running with several mods. When more mods come out, do expect me to release a modding video on that where I'll be going over my favorite mods. In the meantime, I will also have in the video description my top requested mods, the ones that I really want to see made. Anyway, thank you all for watching. This has been Zarek Sahakaran, and please check out the social media links above for more content. I will be doing Overwatch live streams this coming week on hitbox.tv forward slash Zahakaran, and I will be mirroring that live stream in real time to YouTube or Twitch so you can watch wherever you wish. I played the Overwatch beta from the closed state through to the open state, and I loved the hell out of it. I am not really great, but I enjoy it nonetheless. Either way, once again, thank you for watching, and you all have a good one.